Hello everyone. Before the Flash, today I decided to take a flashback to Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Today, in no particular order, I wanted to share my top 10 favorite episodes of Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, starring Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher. This is one of the most iconic duos, and I love this incarnation of Lois and Clark. I remember watching this show on TNT. It was originally aired on ABC, but I remember watching reruns on TNT with my mother. And lately, I caught up on HBO Max. And today I wanted to share 10 of my favorite episodes. This was a really hard list because there are so many great episodes throughout the four seasons of Lois and Clark. Before I continue, if there's an episode I didn't mention, feel free to mention it down in the comments below and let me know your favorite episodes of Lois and Clark. Before I begin my favorite episodes, here are some honorable mentions. First being Don't Tug on Superman's Cape, Season 3, Episode 6. This is a great episode where Jonathan Frakes plays a collector that collects different things around the world, including Michael Keaton's Batmobile. Anyway, he wants to add Superman to his collection. Then we have Season 3, Episode 9, Superman, and this involves some Nazis being frozen and coming back to present day. Yeah, we get Mike Barnes from Karate Kid 3 and Sandra Hess, Sonya Blade from Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Season 4, Episode 8, Bob and Carol and Lois and Clark. Lois and Clark meet this new couple and it turns out they're basically their evil doppelgangers. And then after that is the pilot, a wonderful pilot that shows the beginning of Lois and Clark's relationship, the dawn of Superman with Martha Kent making his outfit, as well as the start between Lex and Superman's rivalry. Starting off, two episodes I have tied that are Christmas themed. Season two, episode nine, Season's Greetings. I love Season's Greetings. Of course, this features the Jeffersons and it was also written by Dean Cain himself. This involves Winslow's shot being fired and as a form of revenge, he decides to make some killer toys or should I say some killer rats. And overall, I like this episode. It's a family-friendly Christmas episode. It's full of fun, but it also reflects upon the greed and materialism, what goes on on Christmas, and it explores the true meaning of what Christmas really means. And that I love, especially for a Superman tale. Also, it's cool seeing the father from the Jeffersons as Toy Man. You know, this is one of the few times where, like, you've had villains that are similar to villains of Superman from the comics, but this is one of the few times outside of Lex Luthor and Metallo that we've had a comic book villain brought to live action in Lois and Clark, and I love it for that. This is a fun holiday-oriented episode in season two of the show, written by Superman himself. This episode also features a young Denise Richards as Jimmy Olsen's girlfriend. Season four, episode 11, Twas a Night Before Mixmas. That's right, Mr. Mix Yes Pitalik makes his first appearance. I love this character, another character brought from the comics of Superman, this time played by Howie Mandel. And Superman pretty much has to relive this day over and over and over. People don't remember reliving the day. So everybody starts off with a fresh mind thinking it's the first day, the first time they're living this day. But Clark remembers and he's getting frustrated and it's such a cool standalone episode and also a very fun Christmas episode. For some reason these two episodes I always remember from the show. Not only am I a fan of Christmas and Superman, but it's cool seeing villains test Clark Kent slash Superman in different ways and seeing different themes explored than your usual run of the mill like Kryptonian versus Kryptonian or fighting Kryptonite. Like this is a very different episode in that way. And you know, back in the time when we didn't have like a bunch of comic book adaptations, this wasn't too bad actually. And it was grounded while still having that comic book fun. After that is season four, episode six, The People versus Lois Lane. This is a cool episode where somebody gets out of prison, Lois interviews him and a gun goes off and he gets murdered and she is framed for murder. So Lois Lane actually goes through a trial and ends up going into jail. So Superman, at this point, they know each other, you know? At this point, Lois knows Clark as Superman. They have a relationship. So that's a difficult thing for him to deal with, a difficult thing for her to deal with, being behind bars for a crime she did not commit. Cool thing about this episode, so you see Lois and Clark and their relationship still flourish during these tough times, but also you get to see Clark Kent investigate, people the Daily Planet investigate what actually went on and why this happened to Lois. It's such a cool standalone episode that you just can't believe it's going in certain directions, but it's just so fulfilling at the end, you know? 
after everything that's happened. They went from being married to having a clone of Lois to her losing her memory to dealing with Kryptonian invaders. And just when you think they had a happily ever after with like their marriage, this happens. But this season was really cool in the way that they discover their first home and everything. But oh man, this episode is just a really good episode, a standout episode in the final season. After that is season four, episode five, Brutal Youth. This is a cool standalone episode in which this old man barges into the Daily Planet and asks for Jimmy Olsen. This man dies, but the shocker is they look at his license and he is in his 20s. He's not an old man. So Jimmy Olsen investigates. And you know, he's been kind of like an errand boy. He's been a photographer. This is like the first time he's like actively investigating a story that lands him into big trouble. And like other young men, this woman pre puts him through an experiment and makes him old. The coolest thing about this episode is that old Jimmy Olsen is in fact played by an old Jimmy Olsen from the George Reeves show. He was also in Superman Returns in a brief cameo. They didn't have to do that, but that was a nice Easter egg and it was kind of cool seeing young Jimmy turn to old Jimmy and them having a ticking clock trying to save Jimmy Olsen's life and stop this woman from doing this to young men. Another cool thing about this episode is that Clark learns that he's gonna age slower than a regular human. So that kind of brings fears into Lois Lane about the relationship. Will she be old while he's still young? This is a great little moment in Lois and Clark's relationship. After that, I have two episodes tied again. Season two, episode 18, Tempest Fugitive. Season three, episode 14, Tempest Anyone. Tempest Fugitive is a very different episode for Lois and Clark. And this is where the show really starts to deal with its own mythology. We get H.G. Wells. That's right, the author of The Time Machine. We get a time machine. And there's this criminal named Tempest from the future. Anyway, he's from a future in which Lois and Clark are together, but Superman changed the world. There's like world peace. It's like Legion of Superhero stuff. He hates that. He wants to go back and stop Superman. So you get that. And this is a good time travel episode in which like Lois... For the first time figures out that Clark Kent is Superman. Of course that has to be reversed, but I love how they poke fun at Lois. She's like even ashamed of herself. Like, why didn't I figure this out? I feel like such an idiot. They go through different time periods. We get to see them go from their present day to like the wild, wild west and seeing like Jonathan and Martha Kent as different characters. That's cool. Jimmy Olsen, you have Patrick Swayze's brother in a role. And then you also get them trying to stop Tempest from killing Superman as a baby. So we get to see when he lands on Earth and we get to meet Jonathan and Martha when they're young. And they're around Lois and Clark's age. So that's really cool. A love letter to the Superman mythology and history. Everything goes back to normal by the end of the episode, but explores so many great moments and also deals with Lois and Clark in a different position and foreshadowing what may be their relationship in the future. I love that. After that, Tempest Anyone is a really crazy episode in retrospect. As a matter of fact, it feels vaguely familiar to some autocrat that was in office in the United States. Yes, Donald Trump and Tempest are quite alike as far as this egotistical man who wants nothing but power. And it's just like anti-American in many ways. And Superman deal with that. He had information about what happened in the future. He was imprisoned. He got out. And what's great about it is that nobody knows who Tempest is. And he presents himself as this leader. And it's a cool episode in which Superman knows exactly who Tempest is. Nobody else does. So it's a matter of proving it and coming out ahead of him. There's many elements that show not only corruption, but then what power it can do. And I can't help but see modern day parallels and how prophetic this episode was. Tempest is an original kind of villain in the Lois and Clark mythos, and it's one that is a worthy foe for Superman. After that, I have two tied, and that is season three, episode 15 and 16, Double Jeopardy and Seconds. Okay. So Lois and Clark finally tie the knot. Klinger is, that's not Lois. It's a clone that eats frogs. I'm just as disgusted as you are. But Lex Luthor, John Shea returns as Lex Luthor. He is fantastic. And this is his ultimate revenge ploy to get Lois back and to get back at Superman. He's figured out his identity and everything. Such a cool episode. We also deal with a Lois clone, making it bad for Lois. You know, Lois is captured and this Lois clone is just causing trouble for Lois outside in the real world. Lex has her, the real Lois, trapped in a sewer area. It's just a start of a great deal of trouble in the episodes. I mean, Lois hasn't lost her memory yet, but we get to that point in seconds where there's a confrontation between Lex and Superman and him saving Lois, the bomb going off. Oh my God, 
these two episodes are a great, great conclusion for the Lex Superman confrontation rivalry in the show. And it's just a shame Lois lost her memory and then was falling in love with another man and had to deal with invaders. Like, it's just sad. It's just like, this was the start of a lot of stress for Clark Kent slash Superman. And it kept you going like a soap opera. But you know what? Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher were terrific as always as Lois and Clark. And their chemistry helped this show tremendously, even in the down episodes. But Lex being back definitely was a highlight and a perfect way to set off the conclusion for season three. I also love season three, episode 22, Big Girls Don't Fly. This is such a sad episode. You know, for a while, my mom and I thought this was a series finale. We had no idea season four existed. I didn't watch that till it was on streaming. I thought this is how Lois and Clark ended. I love seeing Lois and Clark finally settle down, starting a life. And then these two people show up who happen to secretly be Kryptonian. And they tell Clark that he has to go to this little colony of Kryptonian survivors to save them. He's bound by them, bound by this woman. He has to marry her to save his people. I love it. All the way between the Lois and Clark relationships, seeing Clark deal with his Kryptonian heritage and finding out more about his past and of his people, his culture. But then also that ending is just so tragic with Lois looking up and Superman in space. It's a goodbye and it's a sad goodbye. But we get that awesome moment where, yes, Dean Cain was the first to wear the black suit in live action with a black suit, but this time with a blue S instead of silver. But it resembles the comics, and it looks badass. Like, I love it. This episode is one of the saddest of Lois and Clark, but it's also, in my opinion, one of the strongest between them as a couple. After that is Season 3, Episode 10, Virtually Destroyed. Virtually Destroyed is a cool episode in which this, like, geek billionaire invites Lois and Clark to try his new virtual reality game slash program. But in reality, he's using it to extract information from Lois about Lex Luthor. He's looking to get Lex Luthor's secrets and money and everything. And he traps Lois and Clark in this virtual world. And it's so cool. I mean, that's like something straight out of a comic book. Season three and four really start to have a bit more fun with the comics and the Superman mythos. And I love seeing that in a digital age, you know? It's like, yeah, it looks kind of dated in the 90s, much like Hackers. There's a lot of stuff that is foreshadowed in modern time where you can see this happening now, but in a different way. It was so ahead of the curve on technology. Technology was new, but even though like Lois and Clark and other shows were a work of fiction, there are many things that they did get kind of right and were ahead of the time on. And this is one of them. And I just love this episode of them dealing with this virtual reality world and having to get out of there and go through like cyberspace. Such a cool episode that Superman has to deal with a mental foe in a way. Like he has his powers, but in a virtual program, it's like the Matrix, you know? And he has to use his mind. Mind over muscle, so to speak. After that is season one, episode nine, The Green Green Glow of Home. This is a really fun episode in season one of Lois and Clark. There's so many great episodes in the first season, but in this episode, Lois and Clark get tasked to a story in Smallville. We get to see that small country life. And I love it because, you know, Lois is a city girl. She's not used to being in the country. So she gets to see Clark's home, meet Martha and Jonathan Kent. You know, you have a corn festival in Smallville. It's a corn capital of the world. That's some cool stuff, but we also have a villain who we saw earlier named Jason Trask. He's a villain that works for the government, and he has a vendetta against Superman. He doesn't entirely know yet that Clark is Superman, but he suspects that Superman landed in Smallville, and he discovers kryptonite. That's right. This is like the first time we get to see Clark fully affected by that rock. And I love that because he's basically interrogating the Kents, Lois, and Clark get in the crossfire of that. Lois tries to basically reason with other government officials saying, why are you doing this? And you know the government, they're not going to trust him and they're going to have their own contingency plans. But this is a cool episode in which Trask does find out about Clark Kent's secret and he must confront him and he's fighting him weakened. Such a cool action-packed episode with many Superman moments, many funny heartfelt moments of humor between Lois and Clark. You know, one thing that made this show was the relationship between Lois and Clark. The showrunner, she was familiar with Superman, but it wasn't in-depth from the comics, but in many ways it stayed true. And in many ways it focused on Clark Kent, the man. Superman is what he does. Clark Kent is who he is. And that's one thing that this show explored. And I love this early episode from the show. After that is season one, episode 22, The House of Luther. Speaking of relationships, in the previous episode, The Barbarians of the Planet, some terrorists take over the Daily Planet diehard style, but at the end, 
Lex asks Lois to marry him, and she says yes. And you get this epic, angry reaction from Superman, like, no! Like, Christopher Reeve and Lois died in Superman the movie level. House of Luther starts with their wedding. We get another Lois from another Superman incarnation as Lois's mother, but there's a ticking clock. Superman knows who Lex Luthor is. I mean, we saw that pilot. The pilot was a wonderful episode. This is a culmination of everything in season one, the feelings he's had for Lois. He wants to admit it. He wants to start a life with her. He can't tell her he's Superman yet, but he sure can stop her from marrying Lex Luthor, his greatest nemesis. He tries that, and Lex sets up a trap with a kryptonite cage, and we get to see him trap Superman. And it seems like he is going to win. Oh my god, this is such an intense episode where you're not sure if Superman's going to make it in time, you know? It's comic book meets soap opera, but done in the best way, pre-CW. Like, this is, like, really good television. And the Daily Planet is going to be bought out. They need to find a new owner. We get a famous comic book character who's wonderfully portrayed by James Earl Jones. The Daily Planet comes along, the police come along, and Superman ends up coming out on top, getting out of the kryptonite cage and stopping Lex Luthor. Before she says yes, Lex is there, and he runs from the police, and he dies. He falls to his death. And that's it. There is a moment where you thought he was going to tell Lois. You thought Clark was going to tell Lois that he was Superman. And you get the little fingers crossed moment where <laughs> that doesn't happen. But the Daily Planet gets a renovation. And it sets up not only a nice bookend for season one, but a nice opening for where season two is going to go. Of course, they're going to recast Jimmy Olsen and get rid of Cat Grant. But you know what? This was a strong close to the first season. And overall, those are my top 10 favorite episodes. Oh, there's so many other episodes I probably could have mentioned, but feel free down in the comments below. Mention your favorite episodes down in the comments below. This is a wonderful show, and it's vastly underrated, I think, especially when you have Superman and Lois and some other stuff. I don't know. To me, nobody was able to beat Dean Cain, Terry Hatcher, and Tom Willing and Erica Durance. These two are my favorite Lois and Clarks, and this Lois and Clark, yeah, they made this show. And I wish to get a continuation, but if not, I'm thankful for what we do have. And they're the Superman and Lois of the 90s. Thank you for watching, everyone. In the meantime, you can check out these other DC Comics-related videos for more content. Again, share your favorite Lois and Clark episodes. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Till next time.